let's take up the subject now of how to balance a chemical equation. What I would like to do is show you a technique that I've developed that allows us to balance a chemical equation, both simple ones and some fairly complicated ones. Before I start, let me say that for the most part, balancing chemical equations is a trial and error process. And there are a number of techniques that various people have uh, developed to help assist in balancing, especially more complicated uh, chemical equations. So the technique I would like to show you, it requires that I define two chemical species. Once we identify those, it falls pretty easily from that point. So the first thing I would like to do is to define what I'm just going to call a pure element. And that is, for the most part, self-explanatory. It's any element that exists by itself and not as a part of a compound. And I'm just going to show the pure element here with an up caret. The second chemical species that you need to identify are what I'm going to term paired elements. And let me define that. A paired element is one that appears only twice in the equation. It appears once and only once on the reactant side of an equation, and once and only once on the product side of the equation. And so let's just work left to right and see if we can identify which elements are indeed paired elements. First we come to carbon and we can see that it is paired. It appears once and only once on the reactant side and once and only once on the product side. Likewise, we can see that hydrogen is a paired element and we can see that oxygen is not because it appears once on this side of the equation but twice on that side. It is therefore not paired. And with that, you have a great place to start. Your next step is very simple and I'm just going to call it step 3A. The rule is essentially start with the paired element with the largest subscript. So in this case, I can see I have four choices here for I have marked each of these with an underline and I can see that my paired element with the largest subscript is going to be C H4. And so that's where I'm going to start. Oh, by the way, let me go ahead and tell you these identifying these also tells me where I'm going to end my process. And I'm going to end with one pure element. In case there's more than one pure element, I'm going to wind up ending up the process with a pure element. So with that, let's start balancing chemical equation. I now have a starting point. At this point, I'm going to commit to four hydrogens on this side of the equation. So I'm going to lock this coefficient down with a number one, and that's what locks this down at four hydrogens. Well, if I have four hydrogens on this side, I must have four on the other side. And the only way I can get that is to put a coefficient of two in front of my water. Because each water molecule has two hydrogens, and so two water molecules would give me a total of four hydrogens, or two times two is four hydrogens. Very good. So if I look back, and this is where things really get easy. Anytime you have two paired elements in a single compound, that makes it very easy. Because once you've locked one down, the other's necessarily locked down. If this is locked at 4 because of this 1, then necessarily the carbon must be locked at 1 because the 1 is also in front of the C. And if I have one carbon on this side, I must have only one on that side. And so now carbon is locked. So everything is now balanced except for oxygen. To get the last element done, what I'm going to do is set up a little simple math equation. This is the only variable I have left to work with, this coefficient. So I know that there are 1 times 2 oxygens plus 
2 times 1. So there's a total of 4 oxygens on the product side. So I know whatever number I have in my coefficient, I'm going to have to multiply it by 2 because there's 2 oxygen atoms for every 1 oxygen molecule. So this is going to be 2 times what equals 4. And we can see the answer is 2. And so I would put a 2 there, and I can do a double check. That's a total of 2 times 2 is 4 oxygens. And how many do I have on this side of the equation? There's 2, and there's 2 more. So everything balances out. The finished equation, and let's write that down cleanly, taking all these marks off. The final chemical equation would be CH4. You do not show a 1. Uh, any number except for 1 is shown. But in a balanced chemical equation, 1's are understood. Plus 2 oxygen molecules goes to 1 carbon dioxide molecule and 2 water molecules. And there we have balanced our first chemical equation. Now, what we're going to do in the next video is these equations, of course, get a little more complicated. And so we're going to take up a couple of more, more difficult examples. And what I'm going to come back and show you is two tricks of the trade you're going to use. One of those is going to be to cross multiply. And the second trick that I'm going to use, and I'll just call this 4A, or the second trick that I might need to use, I'm going to give it the term fractionation. And with that, you're going to find that you're going to be able to balance fairly easily literally thousands of chemical equations.